Today, I'm going to uh, tackle building utility string illumination. The goal of um, architectural lighting is to create a visual environment that best fulfills the functions intended. Definition of terms. Light is defined as the, that portion of the electromagnetic spectrum to which our eyes are visually sensitive. Lumen is uh, the unit of light energy. Luminous flux used to specify light output of uh, sources. Lumens is the measure of uh, the total amount of visible light from a light source. Candle power is uh, the unit of uh, light intensity, which is expressed in one ca candela equals to 12.57 lumens. Wood candle is the amount or density of lumens falling on an area one square foot, one foot away. Lux is the um, amount or density of lumens falling on an area one square meter, one meter away. One foot candle is equivalent to uh, 10.76 lux. Luminance is the uh, luminous intensity of a surface or object. Illuminance is the measure of how much uh, quantity the incident light illuminates the surface measured in lux per square meter. Foot lumbered is uh, the unit of uh, brightness. Reflectance is the percentage of incident light on surface which is uh, re radiated. It depends on angle of uh, incidents and uh, other factors. Reflectance factor indicates how much of uh, the light falling on a surface is reflected. Transmittance. Ratio of uh, transmitted light to uh, incident light. It depends on angle of uh, incidence. Measurement method and uh, other factors. Transmittance factor describes the amount of light that is transmitted as uh, compared to the incident light. Efficacy is a measure of uh, how well or quality a light source produces visible light. It is the ratio of luminous flux to power measure in uh, lumen per watt in the International System of Units, SI. Luminance, intensity per area. Wherein uh, intensity is uh, lumen multiplied by uh, the candela divided by four lumens. So this is the formula, area equals to R squared. Guidelines for architectural lighting, design goals, identify program needs. Example, a retail store may benefit from dramatic uh, lighting and a computer workstation from a uh, practical lighting. Response to uh, human biological or psychological needs for visual information do not create conditions where eyes must uh, adapt too quickly over too great range of uh, brightness as occupants move into and throughout the building. So let us see is uh, control visual focus. Visual conditions are improved if the uh, visual task can be distinguished from its uh, surroundings. Use brightness, contrast, color, strong pattern, or a combination of these factors. Avoid uniform patterns of light, which can be uh, monotonous and dull. 
for example, use uh, small points of light from low wattage light sources to contribute sparkle without glare. Do not overlight. Use a uh, balanced approach by providing sufficient overall light with focal light on visual task. Visual conditions improve with increases luminance up to a point at which diminishing returns quickly are reached. Program needs. Define design goals for lighting system while keeping in mind that light can uh, focus or divert attention. Define movement. Exposed uh, textures. Reveal form. Lighting conditions have a uh, corresponding uh, subjective uh, visual impression. For example, non-uniform layouts, relaxation, privacy, or intimacy. Bright and uh, uniform light, clarity and uh, spaciousness, warm color, temperature of uh, light source, relaxation, cool uh, color temperature of uh, light source, clarity. The type of lighting system for a particular space will depend on its function. For example, spaces used as circulation or we are referring to stairs. What is the design goal? Based on the uh, subjective uh, visual impression, it should be bright because it is used for wayfinding. Guidelines for architectural lighting. Light sources provide daylight through openings to allow views of uh, nature and outdoor activity and to induce feelings of uh, well-being from sunlight. Use uh, electric light and daylight to uh, complement each other. Save energy. Select light sources to satisfy color rendering needs of uh, people, finishes and furnishings. Color temperatures of light source also should be uh, coordinated with luminance goals. Climatic conditions and uh, program needs. Shade uh, building openings to prevent glare. Use of hands. Deep uh, window reveals uh, fine uh, mesh screens or other unobstructed shading devices. Prevent direct visibility of uh, bright light sources as normal viewing angles by using lenses, lobers, or baffles. Shading can be done using horizontal, vertical, and egg crate devices. Horizontal devices are specifically used for sun shading. Vertical devices are specifically used for sun shading. Sunlighting, always keep in mind to uh, indirectly use sunlight. Shade, redirect, control the amount of light. Efficiency, aid, distribution of light by using high reflectance interior building surfaces, but avoid glare. Integrate forms for sunlighting. Daylight. Maximize solid angle of sky, or we call this one as the overcast sky. Shade, do not block light. Locate the uh, opening sign. Efficiency, aid distribution of light by using high reflectance interior building surfaces, but avoid glare. Building orientation, long axis running along north to uh, south versus long axis running along east to west. Daylighting and sunlighting, it can be achieved through side lighting, like uh, light shelves, sun uh, catchers, monitors, roof. Top lighting, such as skylights, oculus, when you say oculus, this is similar to 
the Pantheon of uh, Rome. So there's actually a, uh, an opening on that uh, dome. Atrium, light wells, and light shelves. Electric uh, light sources commonly used are incandescent and fluorescent. Tip in using between incandescent and fluorescent. Incandescent enhances warm colors, dulls uh, cool colors, and uh, fluorescent colors are perceived as is. Example on surfaces. Mounting methods. Grises, least visible. Surfaces usually set on the ceiling does not require ceiling uh, plenum depth. Track, adjustable and uh, appropriate for changeable lighting requirements such as museum galleries, pendant, highly decorative, wall decorative, architectural, built-in, for example, Cornices, illuminates the wall. Cove lighting, illuminates the uh, ceiling. Light distributions strategy. General or ambient uh, lighting provides uh, uniform illumination. Local lighting provides high illumination on relatively small areas, example, Balance lighting runs along the wall, conceals the uh, light source, which provides up light and down light. Task ambient lighting provides high illumination on task by placing light sources close to the uh, work area and aided by ambient lighting. Highlighting emphasizes areas of interest, example, Artwork on galleries, small rooms, emphasize vertical surfaces, large rooms, dominant uh, lighting are on horizontal surfaces for balance. Guidelines for architectural lighting, glare, and visual noise. Eliminate this uh, tracking visual information, for example, light from below seems unnatural to people. Grazing light on joints between uh, wall panels give unwanted emphasis to defects unless the direction of the light is carefully controlled. Be sure that light source are free from disability glare. Example, improperly aimed high wattage spotlights or discomfort glare. Great visual conditions in which the uh, visual task can be uh, seen in an unobtrusive and non-confusing setting. Guidelines for architectural lighting under form and surfaces. Control contrast. Use the uh, brightness of every surface as a design element. Light from surroundings should be moderately bright such as reflected light from wall and ceiling surfaces, or daylight through uh, perimeter openings. Sufficient light must reach ceiling in order to avoid gloomy conditions when a structure is illuminated. Its form should be complemented, not distorted. Provide even illumination on planar surfaces unless focus is placed on artwork, wall, panels, and etc. Light, vertical uh, surfaces, because uh, they often are the most uh, prominent elements in the uh, field of view. Incandescent lamps. Composed uh, basically of a sealed glass containing a filament. Connected at its ends to the uh, contact area in the base, thereby complementing an uh, electric circuit. The glass uh, envelope comes in a 
variety of shapes and sizes. Bulb designations consist of a letter to indicate its shape and a number of two indicate the diameter in eighths of an inch. Fluorescent lamps comprises a cylindrical glass tube sealed at both ends and containing an inert gas, usually argon and mercury vapors. Built into each end is a cathode which supplies the um, electrons to start and maintain the mercury arc or the gaseous discharge. This light is uh, absorbed by the phosphors in which uh, the inside of the uh, tube is coated and is uh, re-radiated in the visible light range. All fluorescent light sources require a control device or an auxiliary called a ballast located in the metal base. The ballast serves the following functions, supplying the high voltage necessary to start the arc, limiting the current in the arc after it is formed. Important topic for illumination, lumen method. The uh, lumen method, also known as the uh, zonal cavity system, is a way to calculate either horizontal luminance from a uh, proposed lighting fixture section and layout, or quantity of fixtures from proposed uh, fixture selection and horizontal luminance value. The uh, lumen method is based on the definition of uh, Average foot candles over an area which is lumens per square foot. The method modifies this uh, fundamental equation. Foot candle equals to lumens divided by the area or square foot. To account for room size and proportion, the reflectance of walls, ceiling, and floors, fixture efficiency, and the effect of uh, time in reducing output due to dirt accumulation. Deterioration of reflecting uh, surfaces, the uh, reduction of lumens output. Lumen method requires the following information. Room dimension, adequate to compute wall area and floor area, height of fixture above the work plane, reflectance of uh, major surfaces, the ceiling, the wall, and the floor, an estimate of light lost factor, initial lamp lumens, the target luminance level. The uh, Coefficient of uh, utilization is the percentage of total uh, lamp lumens that reaches the work plane. As such, it has nothing to do with the intensity of fixture, but rather with the efficiency of the fixtures. Lumens emitted from the fixture divided by lamp lumens and uh, the direction of the light output. This direction of output is graphically represented by the candle power distribution curve. Since for the purpose of this uh, procedure, the plane of interest in invariably a horizontal plane, typically either the floor or desk level. A picture that throws the necessary have a high coefficient of utilization for the room cavity ratio, or denoted as RCR, and the reflectance values being equal than one that distributes light in any other direction. A higher coefficient of utilization is not necessarily a virtue, 
It only ranks uh, pictures according to their ability to provide horizontal luminance. The uh, lumen method or zonal, zonal uh, cavity system is uh, limited by the following. It is based on a single number, average value, from which uh, follows. It assumes a uniform array of uh, lighting fixtures. It assumes that all room surfaces are a mat or Lambertian finish. It assumes that the room is devoid of obstruction, at least down to the level of the work plane. The uh, light uh, lumen factor is used in calculating luminance at a uh, specific point in time. In the life of a light system, under given condition, it incorporates variation from test conditions in temperature and voltage. So the uh, dirt accumulation of uh, lighting fixtures and the uh, room surfaces, the lamp lumen, output uh, depreciation, maintenance procedure, mainly frequency of cleaning. The uh, atmospheric conditions, so the light lumen factor is also known as the maintenance factor. In order to use the coefficient uh, of utilization table, one must first make assumptions about the uh, reflectance of the major room surfaces, ceiling, walls, and floor. Then, the room cavity ratio must be determined according to one of the following formulas. RCR equals to 5 multiply H times um, Length, add width, then divide it by the floor area of the room, length times width for rectangular rooms, where H is the uh, cavity height. So you can refer later to our diagram. So therefore, RCR equals to uh, 2.5 times uh, wall area divided by floor area. This is for odd shape rooms. Any one of these uh, dimensions may be the cavity height, depending on the uh, location of the work plane of uh, interest and the uh, fixture mounting. Some useful uh, formulas for Average lighting calculations, the number of luminaires equals to foot candles desired times the room area. Then divide it by the coefficient of utilization that you're going to use, the type of lighting fixture. Then the light loss factor, which is expressed in LLF, lamps per luminaire, meaning in a single fixture, how many luminaires are there? then multiply it by the lumens produced by the lamp. So another useful formula is the average foot candles. Lumens divide by lamps, multiply lamps, then you're going to divide the luminaire multiplied by coefficient of utilization, then the light loss factor. So. This is already overall. Then divide it by the area of the room in square feet. Another useful formula for power density. So take note, it is watts divided by the area in square feet. So power density equals to foot candle desired. Divide by the source efficacy. Multiply it by the lumens per watt times the coefficient of utilization multiplied it by light loss factor. Where 
coefficient of utilization, percentage of flight that actually reaches task. So, flight loss factor is the time dependent depreciation factor of the light. So, meaning we will presume that the light for several months, its efficacy is deteriorating. So, this is now what we call depreciation of the lamp. Note, see manufacturer's uh, photometric table or the uh, lighting handbooks of the illuminating engineering society for tables giving values of coefficient of utilization. So this includes the light loss factor, the lumens per lamp, and so on. So take note that for the ceiling cavity, from ceiling tail, it covers the plane of the lamp, which is expressed in HCC. While for the luminar plane, up to the work plane, this is now what we call the room cavity, or sometimes we denote it as room cavity ratio, which is abbreviated as RCR. While for the work plane, up to the floor, we can call this one as the floor cavity, which is expressed in HFC. So meaning this is already the total height of the uh, room. So take note, we can do away from the work plane if the scenario calls for a uh, gymnasium, particularly for sports like basketball and volleyball. So meaning we can already do away from the work plane. So this is just an uh, advisory. So the room is divided into three cavities. The ceiling cavity is the space between the fixture and the ceiling. The floor cavity space between the floor and the work plane. The room cavity is the space between, that is, between the work plane and the luminaire's center line. So take note, in offices, schools, and much other occupancy, that work plane is 30 inches or 0.75 meters. In drafting rooms, it is 36 to 38 inches, 91 to 96.5 centimeters. In shops, 42 to 48 inches, or is equivalent to 106 to 121.5 centimeters. Note, if the initial surfaces reflectance of the ceiling is 90% and the 10% deterioration is expected, use 80% for the ceiling reflection. Wall must be 50%, floor must be 20%. The basic expression for a cavity ratio CR is 2.5 multiplied by the area of cavity wall divided by the area of work plane. In a uh, rectangular space, the area of the cavity wall is height multiplied to length plus to width. Now, if you're going to extrude the uh, the perimeter, so it is already equivalent to 2h. Multiply it by length plus width. While for the cavity ratio of the work plane, cos 2, 2.5 times uh, 2h plus so length plus width, then you're going to divide area of the work plane. So the cavity ratio is once that you extrude the multiplying factor, so 2.5 times 2 equals to 5h.
times length plus width divided by the area length times width for each of the uh, cavities in a uh, rectangular room we have the ceiling cavity ratio denoted as CCR 5 times uh, the height so the ceiling cavity multiply by length plus the width of the room divide by the floor area of the room meaning its length and its width the room cavity ratio which is actually denoted as the um, RCR equals to 5 times the height of the um, room cavity ratio length plus width divided by the floor area of the room length times width so for the floor cavity ratio which is expressed as uh, FCR the formula is 5 times uh, the uh, height of the uh, floor cavity times length plus width divided by the area of the room which is length times width number of luminaires equals to foot candle times uh, the area in square feet so you're going to divide this one with the coefficient of utilization of the selected type of uh, luminaire or lamp then you're going to multiply the maintenance factor times the lumen per luminaires meaning in a single fixture how many uh, luminaires are there then the uh, lamps per luminaire so let us uh, cite here an example how to apply this formula so the problem is there is a drafting classroom the room has a floor size of 28 feet by 29 feet in floor area from floor to ceiling height it is 11 feet so from ceiling to pendant of uh, the fluorescent fixture it is 2 feet the depth of the room cavity ratio from the uh, lighting fixtures plane until the drafting table or the work plane is 6 feet while the floor cavity ratio from the uh, surface of the drafting table up to the floor is 3 feet determine the uh, building type so the building type is category E under school so we will later on show this in the uh, later part the uh, under the appendix of uh, table category E is under school determine the room cavity ratio RCR equals to 5 times 6 feet times length plus width then divided by the area of the room length times width 5 is constant multiply it by the 6 feet which is actually uh, the uh, room cavity ratio so take note this is how we were able to get the value of 6 then the area of the room which is 29 feet add 28 feet then divide it by the area of the room which is 29 feet by 28 feet so the room cavity ratio is 2.11 so you need to determine the ceiling cavity ratio so take note the ceiling cavity ratio you can use this ratio so 2 divide by 6 then multiply it 
times the uh, RCR. So that is why here, once that uh, you utilize the formula, the output is 0.70. Now, there's another way of solving the ceiling cavity ratio using the formula prescribed a while ago. So the CCR equals to 5. 5 is the constant. Then this is the uh, HCC times length plus width, then the area of the room. So take note, CCR equals to 5 times 2, meaning the value of 2 was taken from the ceiling to pendant of fluorescent fixture because its depth is 2 feet. That's why the value that was inputted here is 2 feet. Then the area of the room is 29 feet at uh, 28 feet. Then the, just divide this one by 29 feet by 28 feet, which is actually the area of the room. So we were able to cross check that the value for the ceiling cavity ratio is 0.70. So, meaning it is correct. While for the floor cavity ratio, which is expressed in FCR, we can use the uh, ratio of 3 divided by 6, multiply it by the room cavity ratio, which is actually solved a while ago. So, let us look once again a quick uh, glance of how we're able to solve RCR which is actually 2.11 now we can use this to solve for the floor cavity ratio so meaning just divide 2.11 then multiply it by 3 divide by 6 so the output here is the floor cavity ratio is 1.05. Another way of solving for the floor cavity ratio is using this formula. So 5 is the constant times the uh, height of the uh, drafting table to the uh, floor, so which is actually 3 feet. So take note in the problem. Here, the height of the uh, work plane for the drafting table is 3 feet. That is why we have utilized 3 to denote the uh, height of the uh, drafting table till the floor. Then, the uh, area of the room is 29 feet at uh, 28 feet. Divide by the area of the room once again, which is 29 feet times 28 feet. We're able to solve once again and counter check the FCR. So the value is 1.05. So I refer to <clears throat> table 16.2, the recommended luminance values of common task areas and select school which is under category E. So take note, we will show this one once we progress in our lesson. So once again, we will uh, refer to 16.1, the luminance categories and uh, ranges of uh, luminance values for generic type of activities in interiors. So, see luminance category F, performance of visual tasks for medium, contrast, or small size. So ranges of luminance from 50 
up to 75 to 100 foot candles. So we will utilize the, so as noted a while ago, that we will presume the uh, amount of light produced by the luminaire, which is actually 100 foot candle. So note for one fluorescent that is 40 watts, it produces three uh, thousand two hundred lumens. Therefore, if we will uh, use a single fixture that has two pieces of uh, fluorescent fixture in one set, it is equivalent to six thousand four hundred lumens. So lumens per fixture. So take note that in a single fixture for the fluorescent type, it produces 3,200 lumen. So therefore, we have 6,400 lumens produced. So the room perimeter is 28 feet add 29 feet, or you just simply multiply it times 2 to simplify the formula. So we are able to get 114 square feet for the room perimeter. Well, for the area of the room, so 28 feet times 29 feet is equivalent to 812 square feet. So this is a useful formula in computing for the perimeter area ratio of the room. Therefore, just substitute the given values, 114 square feet, divide by 812 square feet is equivalent to 0.14. So on the uh, lump lumen depreciation, which is actually um, abbreviated as LDD, so take note that these are the wattage for the incandescent, fluorescent, mercury, and metal hide. So this is the wattage produced by the fixtures and then this is the mean meaning this is the average mean produced by the different lamps and this is the minimum so when you say min this is actually the minimum mean produced by these incandescent fluorescent or probably even the fluorescents the incandescent, the mercury, and the metal heights. But gradually, we will just use the standard mean to solve the problem. And then take note of this uh, luminaire dirt depreciation, meaning gradually as the lamp if it is still new, meaning it is very clean, meaning it is 100%. So, zero actually denotes that this is the beginning of the month, the day that it was used. So, this one is actually divisible every three months. So, the highest ratio here, one represents 100%. So, if you're going to look at the range of very clean from 100 up to 0.90 is categorized as very clean and then the range of 0.85 up to 0.65 is still considered clean while the range of 0.60 up to 0.55 the lighting fixture is considered to be medium clean while if it is already 50 percent efficient meaning it is already considered as the lamp is already dirty or if the range is from 0.50 and below it is considered to be very dirty so I'll take note that 12 denotes one year and for 24 months 
is equivalent to two years. Let us presume that the maximum lifespan of the uh, lamp is up to three years or 36 months. So this is the useful, useful table if you're going to presume how many uh, lamps is uh, needed or meaning this uh, lamp lumen depreciation table is useful in calculating the efficiency of the light. For the wall, the coefficient of utilization or CU. So take note, it, the output that was uh, solved is 2.11. is in between two and three. So later on, we will look at the table under 80% and 50%. So it falls under 0.71, which is in between two and three. So for two, it is equivalent to 0.75 and three is 0.67. So therefore, we will utilize 0.71. For the ceiling, zonal cavity coefficient of utilization. So we need to interpolate this one as 0.70. So it is in between 0 to 1. Solve for the maintenance factor. The light lumen depreciation a while ago. What is the value of light lumen depreciation 0.87 so 0.87 falls under this mean okay That is why we were able to get this value. While for the lumen dirt depreciation, we have presumed that it is actually 0.80. Uh, if we're going to look at the table, 0.80 falls under clean. So uh, this is how we were able to get these values. So therefore, the maintenance factor is 0.70. The number of luminaires is foot candles, desired, times the room area, the coefficient of utilization, the maintenance factor, which is up to the 0.70, and the uh, lamps per luminaire. So take note, in a single fixture, we have two. That is why here we have two. And then lumens produced per lamp is 3,200. So therefore, let us substitute the important values and presumptions that were given. So we have 100 foot candle. And then this is the room area, 29 feet times 28 feet. So take note, we have a coefficient of uh, utilization, which is 0 0.75 times 0 0.87, which is actually the maintenance factor, and 0 0.80 times there are two fluorescent lamp in a single fixture, which actually produces 3,200 lumen. So therefore, the number of luminaires reduced is 24.30. So let us just round it off, meaning we can have 24 fluorescent lamp. So take note, because in our uh, single fixture, we have two fluorescent bulbs. So therefore, we need to divide it by two. So 
for a single picture we only so the meaning for a single picture there is two so therefore for the complete lighting picture we already have attained 12 sets of lighting picture this is the answer let us go over the um, tables important tables that we have uh, discussed a while ago so meaning this is table uh, 16 that too we can actually use this in any books or if we would like to use some uh, tables which is actually seen in uh, a lot of uh, lightings in the, the internet uh, sources you can also utilize it so this is the recommended illuminance values of common task areas so take note you were mentioning a while ago category e falls under school okay so which is actually equivalent to 100 foot candle Under table 16.1, illuminance categories and ranges of uh, illuminance, values for generic type of activities in interiors. So the illuminance category is A, which is actually school. So ranges of illuminance, we can have uh, 50. 75 till 100 foot candle that's why I take note we have taken and maximized the 100 foot candle that is why on our previous discussion we have presumed that it is 100 this is where I took that value While for the uh, type of uh, fixture or lighting fixture that I have uh, utilized in solving the problem, so take note that in a one single fixture, there are two fluorescent bulbs, which has, so take note that it is 40 watts. So it produces. 3200 lumen so under 2.11 under 2 and 3 which is actually from 0.75 till 0.67 if you're going to interpolate it it falls in between so we have presumed that it is somewhere in 0.70 till 0.71 that's why we're able to get that value So this is the uh, useful uh, zonal cavity coefficient of utilization table. So take note that for the effective floor cavity for the reflectance is 20%. This is for the floor cavity ratio. So for the ceiling, we have presumed that it is 80%. So meaning there is a... Uh, 20% deduction for the dirt under ceiling. So we will just presume that it is 80% efficient. So we have utilized 50% for the reflectance factor for the wall. So take note a while ago for the wall, we have uh, the output of our wall cavity ratio is 0.70 which is actually in between 0.79 and 0.72 so meaning it falls in between this range so these are the useful uh, formula for the room cavity ratio that we can actually utilize for our activity
let us tackle important lighting units or a very important conversion factor. So either way, you can ut utilize this uh, table to uh, convert the uh, outputs of the luminance. Let us cite an example here. So for a 34 watts, 425 milliampere, we have 48 inch or is equivalent to 122 centimeter fluorescent tube. It produces 3,200 lumens. So the problem calls, what is the um, luminance on the floor of a 2.5 meter by 2.5 meter room? Assuming 60% overall efficiency and uniform illumination. Useful formulas for lux is lumens divided by square meter area. This is in metric system. While for the foot candle, it is equivalent to lumens divided by square foot area in English system. So the solution is solved the problem using the table of lighting units conversion. Useful lumens. So take note, it is 60%, 0.60 times 3,200 lumens, which is actually produced by this fluorescent lamp. So we only have 1,920 lumens. So we, we just use the formula for the um, lumens. So what uh, meaning 1920 and the uh, area of the room is 2.5 meters by 2.5 meter. We have an answer for lux is 307.20. So convert meters to feet. One meter is equivalent to 3.28 feet. So 2.5 meter is equivalent therefore to 8.2 feet. So foot candle, lumens per square foot area, foot candle is 1920. Divide by the area of the room in English system, which is actually 8.2 feet times 8.2 feet. So the output here is 28.55. So you're required to solve the problem using another solution. So to solve the problem using the conversion factor, so take note, 10.67 lux is equivalent to one foot candle. So from foot candle, just multiply it by 10.764 to obtain lux. That is why lux is equivalent to 28.55 foot candle times 10.764, which is equivalent to 306.20. So this is the value for it. Or for lux, you would like to convert it to uh, foot candle. So once again, we have here lux. Just simply multiply it by 0 0.0929 to obtain foot candle. This is a useful uh, table to solve for this value. One lux is equivalent to 0 0.0929 foot candle. So to obtain 306.20 lux, just multiply it with this factor. 
So therefore, foot candle is 28.55 foot candle. So these are important tables that you need to consider in your lighting or illumination. So this ends my presentation.